Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today, we want to talk about Image Picker and how you can upload an image to Firebase Storage. For that, we will take everything that we learned in part one and work on that project further in part two so that we have a running profile image at the end of this session. So, without further ado, let's get started. Now we managed it to create the whole pipeline to the current user, but now we want to actually do something with that information, right? So for that, we have to add two new dependencies. One of them is the Firebase storage. So I would call that Firebase dependencies, and we add the Firebase storage here in that place. And the other one is the image picker. You will find some. For the first one is Firebase Storage. And the Firebase Storage allows us to have access to the Firebase Cloud Storage API. If you don't know what that is, if we jump into our Firebase console down up here, we can see there is a tab called Storage on the left side. And the benefit is we can upload pictures and videos and all file types that you know inside of this Firebase storage. So you just click here on get started, set up your um, security rules for the cloud storage, and then select the storage location, which is for me, Europe. And then you just say done. And with that, you create a default bucket. And you have now like a file explorer inside here, and you can just download the files here and upload files as you want to. I will change the project to one that uh, we actually do. That is the profile tutorial. And you can see that nice little address. And this one is important because this is our current bucket and we can have this folder path for the future. We will need this information, so keep it in mind. And the other package that we want to, to take a look at is the image picker. The image picker is from the Flutter team, from the Flutter core team, and is a plugin. And what it does is it allows us to have the get an image from the camera or from the gallery. The benefit here is that we don't have actually to do something in Android. But back to our example. Let's jump right into the profile view. Inside of the profile view, we want to have it on this tab, right? So the first to do that we want to solve is open the gallery and select an image. Okay, I already said that the image picker is here the cor correct tool for us. The image picker uh, we can execute by first, uh, let's wait for the image picker. This method where we are working in is asynchronous and the Im uh, image picker we have to import. Uh, and this is important, we call it a static very, uh, method. So that means if we take a look inside of this image picker, we find some methods like for example, the pick image. And as you can see, it is static. That means we don't have to create an instance of the image picker here. And now we say pick image and we have to say the source. And for that, we have the image source class from the image picker, which delivers us exactly two values. One, if you want to get a picture directly from the device camera and one from the gallery. So what happens now if we click on the avatar should be that the gallery is opening up. So let's try that. A few moments later. If you get this error message in between when you want to create your Flutter application, it tells us that something uh, was uh, the service binding default binary messenger was accessed before the binding one is, uh, was initialized. And this could happen if we create something uh, inside of our main.dart on top of here there is the setup services. We access inside of our user controller some of the internals. And because this happens, we want to do inside of the main in, on top of it, this widgets flutter binding ensure and initialize before we call these parts. And now we have to rebuild our application. All right, so after we have removed all the errors and all the problems, we can now go back to our profile page and you see already hi is empty. That happens because now here, down here, we can remove that first uh, question mark because current user is now set through the service always. So it is not null anymore. And now we just have to check if display name is null. And if it is null, we have to say nice to see you here. On the other hand, our pick image should be now possible to do. So if I click here, it will ask you for permission to access your file system, which makes absolutely sense because you want to ask for an image, right? So we allow that course. What I created already, I downloaded some of these nice little kit cat, uh, kitty cats. And if we click one of the cats, we see, uh -huh, we picked the image. How can I see that? Well, 
we could create a variable called, uh, let's call it a file image. Now for that file, we have to make sure it is from Dart.io, not from Dart.html. So, and with that, we have the image. And what we can do is we can print the image.path. If I click again, and I click again on one of the cats. So now after a refresh, um, I click again on the image, select one of the cats. We see here the print to the adorable animal blur cat 6172 and so on. But what we actually want to do is the next step. We want to upload this image. So now that we can select it, we can remove that to do here. And what we want to do is now to upload the whole thing. Who would be responsible for uploading this picture? Well, one option would be that we say, uh, or what's for sure is, is that the user controller should take care of uh, how to upload that. We don't, the UI don't want to know how exactly this works. So we call the function of user controller. How would, can we do that? Well, we access the locator again and say get and access the user controller. And then we can create a new method for that, upload profile picture. We create this method. Oh, I already told you that I want to separate the concerns slightly in this one. So I want to have the possibility to don't access directly the Firebase storage inside of this user controller. So that means inside of our Firebase repository, I create a new one which is the storage repo. So also here, the storage repo is the only one who speaks with Firebase. So our user controller has no idea about the internals of Firebase. So we create a class for that storage repository. Inside of our storage repo, what absolutely is for sure is that we want to have access to the Firebase storage. Again, this Firebase storage should be a singleton for our whole application. So what I will do is I go to the locator and also here, I create one of these. I will just take this Firebase or storage repository here inside. And because I know again that the user controller will be dependent on this storage, I will put it in front of the user controller so that the storage and the odd is first initialized and after that, the user controller. Inside of this storage repo, we want to initialize our storage. How can we do that? Well, we have to say this is a new Firebase storage. And here we see we have two options that we have to pass through. The app, we don't have to specify like it is mentioned in the readme because the app is already taken out of the Google Info P list. I'm not sure if this is working for Android, uh, iOS exactly the same way, but for Android, we don't have to specify that. But what we have to specify is the storage bucket. And the storage bucket is nothing else than the string that we saw before inside of our storage. So this here. So I copy that and enter it here. So when we start the application, it will initialize the storage, we have access to it. And now what I want to do is I want to upload this storage, upload a file, because the Firebase storage repository actually don't care if it is an image, if it is something else, it just uploads whatever it gets. We first create a storage reference to where we want to save it. Now there comes something specific into my mind because what we want to do is we want to save the file with the user UID so that every user has exactly one file laid down on this folder structure. So for that, we need to get somehow the user ID. But who has access to the user ID? Well, the user ID is, uh, can be accessed by the odd repo. And the odd repo we can access by via the locator again. So get, and when we get the odd repo, inside of the user ID, we want to check that by author.getCurrentUser. And from the user, we can receive the user ID. If you like, you can also create inside of the odd repo an own method that is calling just for the UID so that you don't get too much information from the odd repo just for that method here. But I will be fine with that for now. What we will do is now creating the storage reference to our Firebase storage. So for that, we access the storage and say ref which receives us the reference. And now we can specify a child and the child is the path inside of your bucket. So what that means is we can create folder paths. So I want to example have user profile and inside of user profile, I want to call a specific file name for that file that we create. And what I want to do is I want just to have the file name of the user ID UID. If I upload now a picture or something else, it will be inside of user profile, the folder paths, and then the file name will be the UID. The next thing is we want to have an upload task and this upload task 
comes from the storage ref. What we want to do is we want to put a file and as I said, upload file should receive, of course, some kind of file. Okay, so we upload now that image up here. And the next step is that we want to um, complete this task, right? So we want to get the completed task. So for that, we want to have the uploaded task and ask it for uncompleted and we wait for that. And this returns us from the Firebase a storage task snapshot. This task snapshot, we can ask for the avatar URL that or that download, um, download URL. And this is the place where we get the file from. So we wait for the completed task, get the reference and get download URL. And now what we can do is we just return this download URL. And that means we return here a future string. Okay. So now we have the opportunity to get this odd repo. We upload the file. And the only thing that our user controller needs to know about is actually how to get this file now. <clears throat> so it wants that the current user dot avatar URL is equal to that new URL that we create with the upload. What we can do here is we access the locator again. And what we want to get now is the storage repo. And here we want to call the method upload file and it needs a file, right? So what we have to do here is we have the file image and we upload the file here. And also here we import dart.io and we have to await because we want to save the string in the avatar URL. But that's not enough, right? After that, we have to set the state again because now we know that after the upload profile picture is done, that the state has changed. So what we will do now is call set state. And important here is that we await for this part here too. Now let's see if this is working. We click on the icon, we select an image, it takes a second and it breaks. Okay, the problem is that we do this part now before I restarted the application in whole because now get it is never executed down here in the locator because the main part is not done. So with that, I just close the application once more and start it up again and we see us. In a now we managed it to upload, uh, to click here. Uh, if I click now the image, ah, no. Okay, we get now some information down here. And as you can see, we see there is some chunk sizing. And because we upload the image directly and set the state correctly, we uploaded the image and now we display the image also directly. And if we reload the storage up here, we can see there is now a folder called user. There is now a folder called profile. And now we have the image part here. The only thing is that maybe is lost is the file ending in the file name. So if you want to download that with the file ending, you have to add that specifically to the name of the file. And as you can see, the image is also pretty big with two megabytes. So you don't get that optimized here. Also, the storage understands that this image is from type JPEG. So and if you click on it, you can also see it is this image, which is pretty awesome. Cool, so we managed it to upload actually an image for that, but we have still one problem left. If I close now down the application or log out of the system completely and log back into it and go to that screen, it is there. But if I close the application in whole and go back into that uh, application, because now the controllers and everything has been reinitialized, we get here an empty image. That is not help for that. What we want to do is in our login screen, login view, we currently call directly the odd repository to sign in with the email and password. And here we don't set anything from the current user, which is a disadvantage. So again, our UI is immediately calling through to the Firebase, which is not a good idea. So what we want to have here is we want to access the user controller. We get that. And the user controller should have that function sign in with email and password, which I create now. Then we jump inside. Uh, everything is created for us. And here inside, we have the access to the auto repository. And now we want to sign in with email and password. Nothing very special here. And you would might be asked, why well, now comes the tricky part that sign in with uh, email and password currently returns void. But what we want to return is a user model. This sign in with email and password returns our auth results or auth result. And the auth results contains, for example, the current user. Here we have again the whole uh, possibility to access the UID and so on and so forth. And we want to create a user model out of that by calling the user.uid. The display name we can also directly pass by by getting the odd result user 
dot display name and this one we can return and why do we want to return it because the uh, that is not enough for us because what happens if we have already an image in place our user controller here has the possibility to uh, download an image yeah or we'll get the opportunity to download an image and this is the next part because at the moment we only upload a profile picture but what is if we just have already uploaded a picture and we want to receive now a picture for that we have to access not only the auto repo but what we also have to access is the storage repository for that i will take this part here with that storage repository and bring it up here and say storage repository storage repo equals to that locator part because the whole user controller has to have access to it so with that we upload an image but now we have also one where we get back a string and we want to say get download URL from this specific user. And how can we do that? We want to get that download URL by awaiting for the storage repo service. And it needs to have a function where, like get user profile image download URL. And what we want to pass by is the current user dot UID. So what we want to do is we receive from that sign in method now a user model with a UID and so on. This is our current user. So what we can do here is the current user is equal to whatever we receive from here. So, and with that, we are sure that this sign in method returns us a current user that we can use now in this get download URL because that is what we want to do next. We want to get this download URL. We want to set the current user avatar URL to this get download URL. Now we receive that. We call this and this function has a return type, but doesn't return. Yep, cool. So we know now this get user profile image URL. We have to create this method and we want to return it immediately. This method will return a future of string and we receive the UID up here. And what we want to do now is again, we ask the storage reference and get the child to the path again. So profile hash and UID. Okay, and now the storage ref can gives us the download URL, which we immediately return. And with that, we return a dynamic of get download URL, which we know is a string. Okay, now our avatar URL is getting set with the sign-in. And this sign-in returns just nothing, but is a part of void. And with that, our current user object has all the information about his place. <clears throat> so now let's try it out. We close our application. And if I log in now, our user is going through this and this. And if we go into the profile image, you can see the image is directly downloaded. And with that, we have managed that our user is getting initialized with the login all the time. So that was quite something. We implemented our Firebase storage. We have now get it in place. We know how the user can upload an image and we can also retrieve the image back later. The next step would be how we can set up a new username the you pass and set up a new password for the user. If you liked it, keep it, uh, give it a like. Um, down in the video description, you find all the necessary information that are interesting for you. And it would be great if you subscribe that channel. Up there, you find two videos that you are maybe interested in. On the right side, you have the subscribe button. See you the next time, guys.